Hi and welcome, it's Jennifer McGuire and I hope you're having a good week. Today I have a product release close-up video for you, taking a closer look at the newest release from Simon Says Stamp. It's my hope that by taking a look at all the products in this release, you can better decide if any of them are ones that need to join your stash at home and also get some ideas for using them. I will link to all of these products below and will be using these in a video very soon. So let's go ahead and jump into the products included in this Simon Says Stamp release. Let's first look at the dies. This is the Floral Burst Collage Die. So I went ahead and die cut it from a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock so you could get a sense of the size. What's neat about this die is you can put something behind it, maybe a scrap of pattern paper, maybe do some rainbow watercolor, whatever you want behind it. Or you could even do a die cut inlay. Now this is the start of a card that I'm doing that will be in a video very, very soon, so stay tuned for that. And in that, I popped up each piece of the flowers and used the negative space as kind of like a stencil. Lots of ways you can use these, and again, I'll have a video soon. Next, we have the heart sprinkle wreath. Again, I cut it from a regular size note card here so you could see what it's like. Look how awesome it is to put a bright color behind it so that it shows through. All you have to do is die cut this, put a die cut or stamp sentiment in the center, put some color behind it, and you've got a fun card. Here's another card that I've started using this that will be in that same video where I popped all the pieces up and added some Nouveau dots. You could use this for a shaker card or just for a window center on a card. Another new one is the Corbel Wreath. This one has a very classic feel to it that I think would work great for fall cards or Christmas cards also. So you can see it cuts nicely on the front of a note card. I do have a card coming up with this die too. Lots of ideas using these dies. But remember, you can use these with just a simple pop of color behind them. You can also make an impression with these dies that would be beautiful. And I'll link to a video showing how. Here is another peek at a card coming up very soon using this Corbel Wreath die. I'm a big fan of dies like this because there are many ways that you can use it. Also, you could just repeatedly die cut this over a background for a really cool looking pattern. Remember, you can also use the little tiny die cut pieces as accents on cards, such as with this die, the Heart Sprinkle Trail. It cuts a bunch of hearts of different sizes that are great accents for other cards. I really like this trail pattern. All you have to do is die cut a sentiment and put it on top. Here's a card that I have in the works where I use this kind of as a stencil to create some hearts and add some gems. So again, stay tuned for a video using these, but I really like how detailed and intricate all of these dies are. Next, we have the Big Day die. This cuts the sentiment, T today is a big day. And it also has a line connecting the letters. So you could cut the letters off if you want, or maybe use the line as kind of like a little border strip going along a card. You can see this fits nicely uh, across a four and a quarter inch wide note card. And it's a nice size sentiment that fits over the wreath nicely too. This would be great to kind of tie some balloons on a card. Now I'm often using window design dies like this one. I really like them because they cut a very detailed, intricate window in the front of my card where you can have things tucked behind it or peeking through it. This would be great for a more kind of classic looking shaker card or you can just put a die cut or stamp sentiment right in the center for a simple card. Look how beautiful that is with just some simple green cardstock behind it. You could take a few of those tiny heart die cuts from the earlier dies and glue them along these leaves to add a little bit of interest. Now I'm very excited about the new Script Thanks die set. I really like the style of this thanks sentiment along with the size of it. I also like that the shadow die is included, so you can cut the word itself and a shadow piece, and you can see how nicely they layer up together. I really like to cut the word from a colored or white cardstock, and then the shadow from a vellum, and it helps make that sentiment pop up on a card nicely. You'll see that in a video soon. These are the picture book bear and fox dies. They are sold separately. What I did is I die cut them from white cardstock. Then I colored the pieces with Copic markers. Then I just pieced them back together to glue them on my card. I did glue them onto white rectangles cut with the wonky rectangles die set from Simon Says Stamp. So you see that faux stitching on the side. 
Now, if you look closely at that bear, he has like a furry texture to him. I did that with my Copic markers. So again, I die cut the pieces from white cardstock, colored them with Copic markers. Then I took a microfiber cloth, put some rubbing alcohol on it, and just pounced it or dabbed it over that Copic coloring. It gives it a texture look. You can use your colorless blender fluid to do this, but I honestly couldn't find mine, so rubbing alcohol would work just fine. I'm just using some liquid adhesive to piece these pieces together, and we'll have a cute little bear where I'll add little enamel dots for the eyes. I stamped a sentiment on the rectangle from the Simon Says Stamp, stamp Set that came out a while ago, and then I colored in the letters with my Copic marker. One thing I wanted to mention, because a lot of people have been asking, is I recently changed out one of the tips in all of my Copic sketch markers. So Copic sketch markers normally come with a brush tip and a broad tip like you see here on the brown marker. I found I never used the broad tip, so I just pulled the broad tip out and popped in this fine tip replacement nib, and it works perfect. The fluid will flow into the nib and you'll have a nice firm fine tip and then the good old fashioned brush tip that we like so much. So these re replacement nibs are now available and I'll link to those if you wanna check them out. I can do a video in the future on how I change them out, but really all you do is you pop out the old broad tip and place in the new fine tip. I just wanted to mention those as I was using that tip to in today's video. So here you can see the final cards that I created, very simple, using those new dies from Simons' stamp. Okay, so now let's look at the new stamp sets in this release. First, we have the So Cool stamp set. This has some fun popsicle images with some playful sentiments. I think it would be neat to stamp the solid popsicle images first and heat emboss them with some beautiful embossing powder. Then heat emboss the outline over that. So you have lots of shine and lots of sparkle with it. It's a very simple stamp layering set, or you can use the solid and the outline images separately. And of course, there is a coordinating die set available. Next, we have the Dancing Fruit stamp set. I'm, I'm very excited about this because I make a lot of teacher cards, and I really like that outline stamp of the apple so much. I think it'll be so much fun to color. However, you can use the outline by itself, or you can use the solid image with it, or you can use the solid images alone. So it's got the apple, the little leaf, the stem, and also a few other fruits here. These stamp sets like this that have the option of solid outline or using them together really give you good bang for your buck. And I think this is a classic set. Okay, so next we have the artsy fruit. There are a bunch of images in here that allow you to create stamp layered fruit pieces. So you have the outline and then two images that layer together in the center. So you can make apples, oranges, pears, uh, watermelon, a bunch of different things. I even like the small little strawberries. Again, you can use the solid images by themselves, the outline images by themselves, or use them together. I also think this would be beautiful just stamped with Versamark ink on a dark cardstock and then use some perfect pearls over it for lots of shine. Next we have the Big Greetings One stamp set. I'm a big fan of stamp sets that have a different look to them or sentiments that have a different style to them. And this one definitely fits the bill. These are larger sentiments, but they're not super bold so they won't distract on the card. I also like the sentiments that say, hey there, and love and hugs. So this is a classic set that could work with a variety styles of stamped images. This beautiful bouquet of thanks stamp set is just gorgeous. Unlike a lot of the outline images out there, this has kind of got a sketchy look to it that I think will really make it stand out from other stamped images. So you could just white heat emboss this and then drop in a little bit of watercolor to quickly color it. Then you can get the coordinating die to cut it out. And I like that this coordinating die even cuts out the little center parts of the image so it has a nice finished look. Okay, now on a completely different look, we have the fingerprint doodle stamp set. So if you look closely here, there's a little fingerprint that is turned into a little animal. So there's the fingerprint doodle stamp set that has stamps that create those fingerprints, or you can use your own, then stamp the doodles on them to turn them into a variety of different animals. Well, I made little bookmarks using these little fingerprint doodles, and I wanted to show you how I created those quick bookmarks. I took an envelope and I sealed the envelope shut. Nothing's inside. And then I cut the four corners off. And I cut them to be a little bit less than two and a quarter 
by two and a quarter. So I have four corners that I can turn into four book bookmarks. And the way these bookmarks stay in place is they slide over the top corner page and it keeps your place. It's much better than a regular bookmark because it doesn't slide out easily. So I have these four cor corners that I've created. So two sides are sealed and one is open to slide the page into. I then cut two inch by two inch white, white, uh, white squares and I had my daughter make little fingerprints using pigment inks. I then stamped over those little fingerprints with the fingerprint doodle stamp set. And I just use a black ink for that. And then I stamped a sentiment underneath it. So now we have a bunch of little square bookmarks that slide over the top corner of a page that we can give to some of our friends and family. I thought this was something fun that she could make and be involved in and that we can send to loved ones. Now I did add tiny bits of coloring to the images, not much. I wanted to keep the color really in the fingerprint and I did find that pigment ink worked really well for the fingerprints, but you could use dye ink if you wanted to. Be sure to head to my blog to see a picture of all the different bookmarks we made. I really like this flamingo, and I also like the bird one and the fish one too. So you can see the little corner just slides over the top corner of a page, keeping the person's place in the book. I am going to have Lila sign her name on the back of these to make them even more special. So there you have a look at most of the products and the new Simon Says Stamp release. If you're interested in, in, in any of these, I do link them below in my YouTube description. Sorry I hurried, I didn't want the video to be too long, but stay tuned, I will have a video using many of these products very, very soon. Again, head over to my blog for more images and more information. In the middle are a couple other videos that might be of interest to you. I appreciate you stopping by. I hope you have a good week and I hope to see you soon.